Now, Russia is intensifying its attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure. Since late March, missile strikes have left some of the country's major power plants in ruins. And Energy Minister Herman Halushenko has urged Ukrainians to prepare for more power outages in the coming weeks. Electricians and engineers are risking their lives to repair some of the worst destruction. DW's Jan Philipp Schultz sent this report from Kharkiv on Ukraine's eastern front line. A small village in Ukraine's Donetsk region, the battlefield is only a stone's throw away. This is the workplace of Yacheslav and his colleagues. The electricians are called whenever power lines are hit along the front line. The men have long ago stopped being distracted by the sound of artillery strikes during their repair work. My family is against this job. They don't like me coming here. But we are very dedicated to our work. It's something we have to do. The frontline village has been the target of many Russian attacks. Most houses and its primary school have been destroyed. Nevertheless, more than 100 people still live here. For them, the technicians are heroes. They're our last link to civilization. Without electricity, we're completely cut off. There's no water, no gas, nothing works. Further away from the battlefield in the city of Kharkiv, electrical repair work also feels more and more like a frontline job, ever since Russia intensified its attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure. This substation has recently been hit and constant air alarms make any attempt to fix the equipment almost impossible. For the fourth time today, warning announcements ask all staff members to take shelter immediately. At a safer location, we get a quick moment to speak to the engineer in charge. It's all very, very difficult. Every time we start to repair something, there's an alarm, and we come back. We have to start all over again. Larger power plants are particularly attractive targets for Russian attacks. The devastation at this thermoelectric plant near Kharkiv is enormous. Six Russian cruise missiles destroyed the engine room and forced the entire facility to shut down. Just look around and you can see the extent of the damage. We're talking about kilometers of pipelines kilometers of cables that are destroyed. This is not going to take months. This is going to take years to fix. Before its destruction, the plant supplied hundreds of thousands of people with electricity, the engineer tells us. Its loss will be almost impossible to compensate. One small hope, the West might be able to provide parts and equipment for the plant's reconstruction. We're really doing all that is humanly possible here. But if we receive some form of support, especially technical support, from other countries, we would be very grateful. Meanwhile, Russia continues its daily attacks on the power grid. And the people of Kharkiv and many other Ukrainian cities almost certainly have many more dark nights ahead of them. Now, Romina Bandura is a senior fellow with the Project on Prosperity and Development and the Project on US Leadership in Development at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. She joins us from uh, Washington. Well, welcome to DW. What do you read into these continued Russian attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure? Do you see them? Do you see this as a Russian uh, as Russia targeting Ukraine specifically, or perhaps uh, the Western energy supply, uh, or indeed the world's energy supply more generally? Thank you for having me. Um, I, I would say, you know, Russia is trying to attack. It's not, this is not just a military war for Russia, it's uh, an economic war. So Russia is trying to not only destroy uh, Ukraine militarily, but it's uh, really targeting all critical sectors, including energy. And, uh, you know, this latest attack in Kharkiv is not going to be, you know, the, the end of it. Obviously, Putin's uh, primary goal is, is Kiev, and he's not going to really stop until he gets Kiev. So, um, I would say, obviously, he's attacking Ukraine, uh, 
but uh, implicitly he's really attacking, you know, the West and the Western values. Because I've, I've seen it written that by attacking the, the Ukraine's uh, energy infrastructure, uh, the markets get spooked, drives up the price of uh, oil and, uh, and uh, other fuels, which of course uh, plays into uh, the Russian economic war effort. Yes, of course. Um, but this is like a, a desperate, uh, you know, plea for for Putin to really uh, attack energy as as one area. But it's not going to be just energy. Obviously, he uh, wants to destroy the agriculture uh, sector, and that also has ramif ramifications um, abroad uh, in developing countries, and obviously uh, drives up uh, price of fertilizer. So. Uh, Yes, he is uh, trying to uh, destroy Ukraine, but also, you know, indirectly, he's fueling, uh, trying to fuel more uh, disorder and chaos in other markets. So if we look ahead to post-war reconstruction and presume that Ukraine wins in whatever form, um, you wrote last year that Ukraine now has a chance to break away from 350 years of Russian domination and that it shouldn't rebuild what it had. What did you mean by that? So, um, you know, R Russia, this is, you know, this is not just a domination from Soviet times, but it goes back, I would say, to uh, Peter the Great. Um, and so Russia has always tried to uh, dominate uh, its neighbors and uh, has constructed an economy and infrastructure and obviously institutions that support, uh, you know, the Russian empire. So our, our uh, message and our policy uh, advice is to reconstruct Ukraine to European standards to uh, fit you know the values that obviously Ukraine wants is to be free independent have a, a market economy and so uh, this is a chance for Ukraine to really break away from from that um, you know Russian past and the new generation, obviously, uh, Ukrainians want this. And, um, you know, since 1991, uh, yes, Ukraine had independence and freedom, uh, but there's always there's always been this, you know, Russia trying to uh, dominate um, uh, Ukraine. So really, this is a very big opportunity for the Ukrainian people. Thanks for that. Uh, Romina Bandura from the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.